Hello friends, welcome back to the lecture series on applied statistics and econometrics. So, in last two lectures we have been discussing the case of analysis of variance. Today also we are going to continue the same discussion, but today we are going to uh, study N way ANOVA. Well, but uh, N way ANOVA is a complicated uh, matter, so that is why you know I decided to give you the case of two way ANOVA which is simple to understand and easy to deal with. So, what do we mean by two way ANOVA? So, if you remember our discussion on analysis of variance so far, we have one continuous variable y and we have one grouping variable say a which is a qualitative variable and this grouping variable a has uh, you know two labels say a naught and a 1 and then you know as per this a naught and a 1 you group your y observations under two uh, different buckets and then you are interested to know whether there is a difference in the population mean for y across or between two groups or not. Now, what if, if I say that now you are interested to study the impact of another qualitative variable say b. So, then how would you proceed? So, that is going to be the subject matter of today's discussion which is uh, mostly based on the two way ANOVA. So, let us now have a look at today's agenda items. So, in today's lecture we are going to briefly describe what is uh, known as factorial design and this factorial design is a very important concept or statistical tool in many fields namely psychology, agricultural science, education research, medical sciences. And then we are going to study what is the difference between main effect and the interaction effect and uh, then we are going to revisit the ANOVA identity in the case of two way ANOVA and finally, we are going to show you how to conduct an F test in two way ANOVA case. So, we are going to start the discussion on two way ANOVA by asking three questions. So, note that when you have two qualitative variables or factors A and B affecting a continuous dependent variable y, then you know you can think about two different effects and they are called the independent main effects and the combined interaction effect. So, how do you get appropriate measures for these two effects? Because if you can get the measures for uh, independent main effect and combined interaction effect, then you can establish that your qualitative variables or factors A and B have some statistically significant impact on the dependent variable Y. So, we start by asking three different questions. So, question number one is the following. How different from each other are the means for levels of variable A? So, what do we mean here? We mean that okay, there is a continuous dependent variable say y and uh, there is a factor a. So, uh, let us assume that there are only two labels for this uh, factor a. So, if I now uh, club my observations uh, or if I now put my y observations in these two different groups say a naught and a 1 whether the splitting of uh, sample has any impact on the mean response or mean y value or not. So, the same question could be asked in terms of the factor b and that is what exactly I have written as the second question. Now, the third and last question is even more important. When you are dealing with two or more explanatory variables, you cannot assume that these two independent variables are not going to affect y simultaneously. There could be possibilities that two independent variables in our case two factors a and b could 
have an impact on y simultaneously. So, there could be interaction between A and B. So, that will lead to the interaction effect. So, if I want to now measure the interaction effect, I should get the answer for the question number 3, which asks how different from each other are the means of the response variable or outcome variable for different combinations produced by A and B together. Okay. So, the main effect is the effect measuring performance of one of the explanatory variable considered in isolation. So, that means that we ignore the other factor or the variable in the study when we are changing the labels of this particular explanatory variable in question. Okay. And what is interaction effect? So, interaction effect occurs when the effect of one variable is different across the labels of one or more other variables. So, basically here both the qualitative variables or the factors A and B their labels are simultaneously changing. Now, I am going to talk about factorial design. So, I have uh, told you at the very beginning of this lecture that factorial design is a very useful concept in applied research, but you know it is quite complicated as well. So, for this course I actually uh, want to show you the simplest possible case of factorial design uh, and that is the 2 by 2. So, let us have a look at a 2 cross 2 factorial design problem. So, let us begin by uh, defining factorial design. What is it? So, it is a statistical technique that allows for the estimation of the main and interaction effects between two or more independent variables on an outcome variable. And here the independent variables could be of qualitative uh, in nature. So, you know there could be attribute type variables and generally the outcome variable is a continuous one. Okay. So, we will uh, tell you the story of 2 cross 2 factorial design through a simple example and this time I am going to pick the example from agricultural sciences. We all know that crop yield depends on the dosage of fertilizer or the type of fertilizer you are providing to the uh, crops and also the variety of seeds, whether it is a local variety or whether you know it is an improved variety or it is a BT one. So, you know seed uh, variety or seed quality definitely will have an impact on the crop yield and so to the dose of fertilizer or type of fertilizer. Suppose an agricultural scientist wants to measure the impact of different seed varieties or different dosage of fertilizer on crop yield and he wants to run an experiment. So, how do you think that this person is going to proceed? So, here you know let us assume that uh, there are two factors fertilizer that is factor A and uh, the factor number 2 is a seed variety that is my factor B and uh, both these factors they have two labels. So, fertilizer uh, factor A has two labels A0 and A1 and uh, then uh, seed variety factor B also has two labels B0 and B1. So, here in the slide you see I have a table where I am showing you four cells with you know Roman 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, written in these cells. So, what do they mean? So, they actually mean the combined effects of uh, different uh, labels of factors A and B. So, now if I uh, for an example look at the uh, you know cell in the southeast. So, that is basically uh, number uh, Roman number 4 you can see there. So, what does it uh, tell us? So, it tells us what is going to be the uh, impact of combination of A1 and B1 on crop yield. So, basically if I apply the A1 uh, level of fertilizer and B1 level of seed variety, then what kind of a mean crop yield I am going to expect. So, of course, based on this simple setup, you can compare uh, different cells uh, two at a time and that is what we are going to do the next. And you see I have listed down the 
results of these uh, comparisons so that you can follow it uh, quickly. So, let us look at you know the cells 1 and 2. So, if I compare cells 1 and 2 then what do I learn? So, note that what is happening if you compare 1 and 2. So, you are fixing the label of seed variety at B naught and then you are changing the labels of fertilizer factor from A naught to A 1. So, basically what are you doing? You are measuring the effect of the qualitative uh, factor or the attribute A at a specific value of the factor uh, B. So, that specific value is of course, B naught. So, similarly if you compare 3 and 4, then you get the effect of the attribute A for the specific value of attribute or factor B and the specific value is B 1. Okay. So, now if these are different numbers, then we can say that A and B actually interact. Now, similarly you can compare the cells 1 and 3 and 2 and 4 and then uh, derive certain uh, similar interpretations. So, now we are going to discuss these two effects main effects and interaction effects in detail in this context of this 2 cross 2 factorial design example. So, how to interpret ME and IE? So, in the absence of the interactions, the, the main effects have a straightforward interpretation. What happens to the mean outcome level? So, that is basically mean of my dependent variable y as we change the level of factor A and keep the level of factor B fixed. Okay. So, you can also uh, change this phrase slightly and you can switch the positions of A and B. So, if there is no interactions, you can get the main effects for both of your factors A and B. But, if there is an interaction between A and B, then the interpretation becomes quite difficult. So, now the question emerges, how can I measure the main effects or how can I uh, know from data that there is no interaction effect. So, for that there are uh, three different methods possible. So, first we are going to look at the method of marginal means, then we are going to study the method of uh, you know the diagram method and the third one we are going to discuss the case of ANOVA method. So, now we are going to first define what do we mean by marginal means because you know that is the pivotal concept uh, for the method number 1. So, marginal means are basically the means for one level of a factor averaged across all level of the other factor. So, this definition will be clear if we look at the table below. So, suppose I am interested to get the marginal mean of a particular value say A naught of the factor A. So, then what I am going to do? So, I have to now uh, fix the column here. So, the first column I am going to fix and then I am going to move down across rows. So, I see two different uh, numbers for two different values of factor B, B naught and B 1 and they are 10 and 15. So, I have to basically now take a simple arithmetic mean of these two numbers and I get 12.5. So, that is basically the marginal mean for the attribute value A naught for attribute A. Similarly, I can interpret the other marginal means that I am showing in this table. Now, once the marginal means are computed, how can I say that these marginal effects are statistically significant? Well, we cannot comment on the statistical significance of these marginal effects. You can maximum you know uh, look at the difference between the marginal means and then see whether uh, they are large enough or not, but you know the question remains how large is large enough. So, then uh, how do you then uh, make sure that you know you do not have any interaction effects and if whatever you know you are observing the difference between the marginal means are actually due to the main effects. So, for that you can draw 
a diagram. So, that would be the second method. So, here in this slide I am going to talk about the second way of judging whether uh, there is uh, no interaction effect in your uh, data. So, uh, we will continue with the you know old same old table that I have shown you in the previous slide. So, let us have a look at the uh, case. So, here you know at the bottom of the slide I am showing you a diagram here. So, on the y axis or the uh, vertical axis I am plotting the mean response. So, you see in the x axis I am measuring two different values of the attribute or factor b and I am uh, coding them as low b. Uh, and that is the B naught value and there is high B. So, that is basically the B 1 value. Now, I am going to fix low B, B naught category and for that I am going to now plot the values of or the cell means for capital A equal to A naught and capital A equal to A 1. So, for capital A equal to A naught the value will be 10 and that is what you are seeing here this uh, black color or blue color diamond sign and then the uh, second value would be 15. Why? Because I am fixing the value of uh, B naught and then you know the other case possible is uh, capital A equal to small a 1 and you know my cell mean suggests 15 for that particular combination B naught A 1 and that is what you know I have plotted. So, you see 15 that is basically you know a square uh, with you know red color border and uh, you know uh, red box that you know you are seeing. So, here uh, similarly you can draw the other two points or the other two cell means and note that if I join these uh, cell means meaningfully, then I get two parallel straight lines positively sloped. So, here you know by following the uh, statistical theory, I can tell that there is no interaction. But of course, you know this is a very simplified assumption and uh, you know this is just in an illustration there could be interaction between A and B and if interaction is there then there could be several uh, types of uh, you know diagram uh, can emerge. There could be like you know the one line crossing the other one or if it is not crossing the other one you know the slope may differ from one to the other. So, there are many possibilities if there is uh, indeed an interaction between two qualitative factors A and B. But you see if you get two parallel straight lines you know that is a simple rule. So, if you observe uh, after plotting the cell means that you can obtain two parallel straight lines then that means that these two factors A and B they are independent to each other. So, there is no interaction happening. So, now I am going to talk about the third approach which is the ANOVA approach. Now, why do we require a third approach because we have gone through two different approaches and they seem to be pretty easy going right. So, they are simple, but you know you understand that real life is very complicated and simple methods may not be able to handle all the complications that we observe in reality. So, if you have say more than uh, you know two grouping variables and say uh, you know two levels per grouping variable, then what will happen? Can you draw you know a diagram and then see whether you know you get two parallel lines or not? Probably not and also you note that when you do the math by looking at the marginal means and uh, you know the diagram that you draw, they may actually give you uh, you know contradictory results. So, in that case uh, how do you uh, actually conclude whether there is interaction effect or not or whether the main effect or the interaction effects are significant or not. Note that first two approaches that I have shown you here they are you know kind of summary measures right you know you cannot establish statistical significance. So, here uh, I am going to talk about the ANOVA approach which is useful when you have a complicated uh, story to deal with or you have you know some contradictory results emerging from first two approaches. Okay. So, note the difference or the similarity between 
the previous two lectures on ANOVA and the today's lecture. So, um, if you remember I started with the ANOVA story in the very first lecture by comparing the population means and later I said that well uh, I mean it is better if we look at the variance and that is what you know uh, gives rise to this ANOVA identity and finally we landed up conducting an F test which is a test for variance. Okay. So, here also if you see the first two approaches that uh, I told you which are uh, extremely simple the cell mean plotting and the marginal means approach they are also you know somehow you know comparing uh, different mean values and they are not talking about the variance. But here the third approach the ANOVA that you know we are going to uh, study next you know is going uh, to apply the concept of variance because you know it is a general one and we can actually talk about statistical testing easily if we uh, actually apply this concept of ANOVA in the case of 2 by 2 factorial design models. So, here in a simple 2 cross 2 factorial design world how do I measure the main effect of factor A. So, basically I have to focus on the overall difference among the levels of the factor A and similarly we can also get uh, an idea about the main effect of factor B by looking at the overall difference among the levels of uh, factor B. And how do I get the measure for interaction effect? So, we are talking about A cross B. So, the differences among the levels of one factor will depend on the levels on the other factor here. So, that is you know the interaction effect in nutshell. Now, let us see how my ANOVA will look like in this case. So, I am interested in uh, modeling the total variation in y and that can be broken down in two parts if you remember the ANOVA identity from the previous lectures. One is basically the variation between groups and that is uh, measured or you know abbreviated as SSB and the other component is variation within groups or error. So, that is uh, you know abbreviated as SSW or SSE. Now, the first component variation between groups or SSB can be broken down into uh, three sub components here and the first one will come from the variation from factor A, the second component will come from the variation from factor B and the third component is the variation that will come from the interaction effect if it is significant and that basically is a new factor that one can think about A cross B. Now, we are going to look at the data layout for a 2A ANOVA model. So, here let us assume that the continuous variable is y and we have two factors uh, A and B and capital A has A labels and uh, factor B has B number of labels. So, okay, you see here in this slide I measure or I denote an observation k by y i j k. So, here i is basically the levels for my factor capital A and there could be small a number of levels available for the factor capital A. The second component in the subscript is j and that denotes basically the levels of factor capital B and there could be small b number of levels available for the factor uh, capital B and then the third symbol in the subscript that is k. So, that is basically number of observations in each cell. So, here I am assuming a, a simple case I am assuming that uh, there are n number of observations. So, uh, you know k will take value uh, from 1 to small n. Okay, so, now let us have a look at the matrix design that you know I am showing you here. So, in the rows I am denoting or I am representing different levels of factor A and you see there are small a number of you know rows and then uh, in the columns you know I have uh, small b number of columns. So, these are for each levels of factor B 
So, what do we observe in the cell then? So, say one particular observation let me concentrate uh, and that is uh, y 1 2 1. So, what does that mean? So, it means that you know this is the observation that corresponds to the uh, label 1 for factor 1, label 2 of factor 2 and this is the very first observation in this combination and there could be n number of such observations which are satisfying that uh, they actually are uh, corresponding to the label 1 of factor A and label 2 of factor B. So, this is the way you can interpret all other numbers or symbols that you are seeing in this data matrix. Now, we are going to revisit the equation, the mother equation for the ANOVA analysis and uh, I am going to now show you how a particular observation y i j k can be broken down in various components. So, here you see the observed response y i j k can be broken down into four components. One is the mean which is the grand mean or the overall mean in the data of you know the response variable y and then there is alpha i. So, that is basically the uh, effect of being in group number i and now this new addition you see here that is beta j. So, that is the effect of being in group number j and then I of course, have the idiosyncratic error epsilon i j k. So, needless to say that we need to estimate all these uh, unknown population parameters mu and the error variance sigma square. Now, how to go about you? Now, how to go about it? We all know that we have to make use of the ANOVA identity. So, in this case what will be the form of ANOVA identity? I am not going to show you a complicated messy expression here involving sum notations and all. So, I am you know going to show you here uh, you know simple expression uh, here and that is easy to follow. Uh, in the next lecture, I am going to give you an empirical illustration or an example. So, you know how to compute you know these components, but as of now you focus on the ANOVA identity. So, the sum of squares total SS total can be broken down in four parts here. So, one sum of squares will come from the factor A, the other one will come from factor B and there is another one will come from the interaction effect which is a cross b and finally, there will be one sum of squares coming from the errors. So, that is s s within. When we are conducting ANOVA, there is a concept called ANOVA table. In the previous two lectures, I have not shown you you know the form it takes, but let us uh, now have a look at ANOVA table because in uh, different textbooks or in uh, project reports, you are going to face this ANOVA table. So, now focus on the bottom part of the slide here I am showing you the ANOVA table. So, you see there are 5 columns here the first column and these 5 columns you will always see by the way in any ANOVA table. So, the first column will uh, give you the sources of variation and here of course, you know we have uh, 4 sources of variation coming from the ANOVA identity and the second column gives uh, the degrees of freedom. I explained you why we have to take care of the degrees of freedom. So, I am skipping a discussion here you can uh, you know go back to the previous two lectures. Then the third column talks about the numbers that you calculate from your sample and these are the sum of squared numbers uh, that you know will come from you know four different sources of variation in this particular case. So, if you divide the sum of squares by the degrees of freedom then you get the means uh, squared and uh, that is basically again can be computed for four sources of variation in this context. So, the fifth column gives me the f values. So, how do you calculate the f values? So, you basically have to focus on a particular row and you get the ms value for that particular source of variation and if you divide that number by the ms within number then you get the uh, f value corresponding to the source of variation. And of course, you know you will get uh, 3 uh, such f values one for a one for b and the other one is for a cross b. Okay. So, this is basically the structure of the ANOVA table in a nutshell. 
So, now after ANOVA table what to do next? So, next we will conduct an F test because we have already uh, calculated the values of the F statistics. Now, see that we are uh, mostly interested to uh, figure out the main effects that you know it is not a bad idea to have a test for the interaction effects as well. Because of course, we may be interested to know whether there is interaction effect. So, whether you know A and B jointly have an impact on Y. So, we are going to conduct 3 F tests, 2 for two main effects, one for factor A, one for factor B and the other one is basically an F test which will test the statistical significance for the interaction effect A cross B. So, here I am showing you how you can conduct this F test, you know we have done F test uh, in the uh, previous lecture only. So, probably it is uh, fresh in your memory. So, in the previous slide I have already shown you how to calculate the uh, F value for the you know sources of variation. So, here uh, you know I am showing you uh, three different cases. So, the first one in the northwest corner of the slide is basically talking about the case of factor A. So, for that I am showing you the rejection region. So, you have to calculate the value of F and then you have to figure out the critical value from the F table for a corresponding uh, value of alpha and the degrees of freedom and if the calculated F value is higher than the uh, critical value or the tabulated value, then you say that ok I reject my null hypothesis. So, similarly you know you can follow the procedure to test for other F values. So, in the north east corner of the slide I am showing the case for factor B and uh, under the second bullet point of the slide I am showing you the case for the interaction effect. So, we are done for today. In the next lecture, I am going to you know show you a numerical example uh, through which uh, it will be easier to understand the calculation steps and uh, I would uh, finish our discussion on analysis of variance by uh, introducing a concept called ANCOVA. See you then, thank you.